Across America and around the world, once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time, the early edition. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Nelson. And tonight, folks, we wish you all a Merry Christmas. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Almost 2,000 years ago, in a small town in the Middle East named Bethlehem, a child was born who was given the name Jesus. I hear in my travels around this great nation, wherever I go, people tell me that they're just one person, that there's nothing that they can do to change the world or to make it better or worse. They're just one lonely, helpless, insignificant person. I wonder what the world would be like today if Jesus of Nazareth had felt or thought or believed the same thing. You see, because he was just one, lonely, helpless, and if you'll remember, tempted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, person who set out to change the world, and he did. He did. I wonder if he would recognize the world as it is today as being the result of what he taught. I wonder what he would say about the countless wars throughout history and the millions upon millions of deaths murders committed in his name. I wonder what he would say about those who have taken what he taught and twisted it and used it to preach hatred of other men and women because their skin is not the same color or they don't believe the same things that you or I believe. I wonder what Jesus of Nazareth would say about these things. I wonder how he would feel after having come to preach peace on earth, trying to convince everyone that he met that heaven is within us. I wonder what he would say about what is happening in this country and in the world today. I wonder what he would say about Christians who, although they profess to be Christians and tag that name upon themselves and upon their churches, I wonder what he would say about those Christians who judge their fellow man on a daily basis. I wonder what he would have said about those of us who made the statement recently when a church was burning in Waco, Texas. I wonder what he would say about those among us who call ourselves Christians, who made the statement, those people are crazy, they deserve what they got. Are they just a bunch of religious fanatics? Didn't you hear David Koresh? said that he was the Messiah. I wonder if Jesus could see the world now, if he had been here to witness what happened in Waco, Texas, and even though he wasn't here, I can assure you that he witnessed it. I wonder if he would want to return to this world. I wonder if he would want to save those who claim <laughs> that they are Christians. I wonder what would happen to Jesus of Nazareth if he were to come back now, today, 
and stand upon this earth and say to the world, I am Jesus of Nazareth and I have returned. What would happen to him? What would happen to those who believed him and followed him? That's the question for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to open the phone lines, and I want to know, what do you think would happen to Jesus of Nazareth if he were to return to this earth today? Right now, as we speak, if he were to stand up and say, I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I have returned and fulfilled my promise to the world. Would he too be burned? Would Christians say he's just a religious fanatic? He's a nut? He claimed he was the Messiah. He deserved to die. What would Janet Reno's position be? Would he just be another mad leader of a cult? Would they send the ATF and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to arrest this man? The telephone number is 602-333-2174. 602-333-2174. Search your conscience. Search your heart. Look at the world. Look in the mirror at yourself. And then call me and tell me, what do you think would happen to Jesus of Nazareth if he stood among us today and declared, I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I have returned to fulfill my promise to the world. You see, I have a habit of striking home right to the point, to the quick of the matter. I can hit your heart like no one else because I know you, and no one, no one is calling. For the first time in the history of this radio broadcast, the phone is not ringing. Why? Because you know the answer to that, my friends. Now the phone is finally ringing. The longest it's ever taken. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes. I'm calling from uh, Elk City, Oklahoma. Hello. Hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Yes, uh, your question, what would happen if Jesus of Nazareth was to come to earth today? Yes. I feel that the people that um, the people that are of his spirit would know him, and how, others would crucify him again. How would they know him? By the spirit. But how would they know the spirit? You see, the United States government and the press claimed that David Koresh said that he was the Messiah, claimed that he said that he was Jesus. Yet no one went down there to find out whether he really was or really wasn't, never mind the fact that he never said any of those things. I agree with you. I think that that was a horrible thing. And I believe that the body of Christ is going to answer for not being um, on call and going down there to his defense, regardless of what he believed. You're a very intelligent woman. And uh, you're absolutely correct. Christians will pay dearly for what happened in Waco, Texas. And uh, I hate to say that. I hated to realize it at the time, but it's true. Yes. I want to thank you for your astute observations, and you were the first caller. Uh, this is the first time that it ever took that long for our telephone to ring when we open the phones. Usually it's ringing before we open the phones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this question tonight is one that strikes in the heart of every single person out there who believes in any religion, not just the Christian religion, for it strikes home to just what is it that we all stand for? Who are we really? What would we do if Jesus Christ returned to this earth? Or if you're a, a Jewish person, what would you do if your Messiah stood up and declared his presence? And if you are a follower of the faith of Allah, Islam, what would you do if Muhammad stood up and declared that he had returned to the earth? Or the Hindu religion, what would you do 
if Maitreya declared his presence. Now I feel that you I feel that you will know by the spirit within you and the spirit within Jesus. Just like you can tell uh, within just individuals who who is really you know, you can say you're a Christian and you can have all sorts of bumper stickers and all of this, but it's the spirit within you that relates to the other spirit. You can tell by the spirit within each other if you're of Christ or not. Well, that may be true, and there may be some people who can do that. I feel that, that I feel that. I knew that everything was wrong about Waco when it happened, and I went down there and broadcasted from Waco. And I set in motion events that would uncover all of the lies. And this was the first radio broadcast that let the people of the world know what those lies were. But even when Jesus was walking upon this earth, bearing in mind that all of us who follow his teaching and believe in him do so as an article of faith, and that's what makes a religion a religion, because no one has ever found any real solid proof that he ever really did walk upon this earth. But according to the recorded events in the Bible, people didn't believe him when they saw him face to face. Why would they believe him now? Well, again, I, I just have to say from my own, you know, from my own point of view, uh, how I how I believe, and I I feel this even in the scriptures. I feel the spirit in the scriptures as I read it. So you feel that you would know. Oh, yeah. Who this man was. Yeah, I think anybody that, that's really a Christian, I mean, there's a difference between saying you're a Christian and being a Christian. There's a difference between uh, religious people and being a, a, a true Christian. Uh, you walk, you know, that's a, a walk of love. And that's, a, that's where uh, there's so much strife and division in the uh, churches because it's not, they're not walking with that love. That's correct. I want to thank you for calling. I thank you for your program. I listen to it as much as I can. Wonderful. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you also realize that December the 21st, uh, December the 21st, well, you know what I'm thinking about. December the 25th is not the birthday of Jesus Christ. It is the day that Christians celebrate the birthday of Jesus the Christ. It actually was a pagan holiday commemorating the point when the sun began its movement back toward the northern hemisphere after after it had proceeded to its southernmost point. In other words, the winter solstice. And that is truly the meaning of Christmas. Now, it doesn't matter what you celebrate on any day or what date you celebrate it, as long as you are aware in your mind of what you're celebrating and why. The Christmas tree actually has nothing to do with Christmas. It, too, comes from a pagan, a pagan ritual that was carried out in northern and central Europe in the ancient times. And I could go on and on and on. Santa Claus also comes from a pagan belief. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, this is Lester Dahlberg, Mail Road of Texas. Hello, Lester. Turn your radio off. Okay, I'll turn it down. Uh, <laughs> I want to congratulate you for sticking up for the people in Waco. I think that takes a lot of guts. Well, I don't and think... And I thank God on your side for doing it. Well, thank you, Lester. Uh, thank you for all the mail you send, too. <laughs> Didn't think I'd recognize you, did you? Did you know you did. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I was just trying to get as much truth to you as I can, because I think you and Lyndon LaRouche can straighten that world out. Well, I don't know much about Lyndon LaRouche, but we're sure trying here. I do know that uh, they have an excellent organization called the Executive Intelligence uh, Review, which has uh, uncovered an awful lot uh, of information that the people of the world need to know. Especially that over in Russia and Bolsia right now. Mm-hmm. That's true. I neither endorse nor non-endorse Lyndon LaRouche. I don't know much about him, but I do well, know that... Well, I don't that blame you, know, for at least, you know, sitting back and learning the truth first. Well, that's what we all have to do. That's the message of this broadcast, is that everyone needs to wake up. They have to realize 
that through the throughout the history of the world, the people have been lied to and manipulated and deceived and and uh, led this way and that and pitted against each other and uh, and none of it has ever been for the reasons that we've been told. The people of the world need to wake up. Otherwise, there is no future for us. There will only be a future for those who are perpetrating the lies and the deceit and the manipulations. They will have comfortable lives. While we, as we have always done, suffer and kill each other and slave so that they can have those riches and, and uh, protected uh, existences, I, I believe that the time has come for the people to either become responsible and begin to govern themselves our mankind is going to go backwards in a retro evolutionary jump to become slaves again owned by some government or some sultan or some emir or some president well we just go right back like it was in our country when the first blacks came over here you know slaves that's right only we will all be slaves. Yeah, except, you know, in England, they, uh, they were a lot of people there that were slaves before they came here. That's correct. That, that's the debtor slaves. That's right. There were actually at one time more white slaves in the United States of America in this country than there were black slaves, and that's been overlooked by all of the history because it just just isn't politically correct to tell the truth today. If Galileo, if Galileo were alive, they wouldn't have been so kind to him today as the Pope was back then. He just imprisoned him for the rest of his life. Thank you for calling, Lester. Thank you. I enjoy your show. Good night. Good night. And Merry Christmas. 602-333-2174 is the number. Carolyn, you're welcome to jump in here anytime you want to and uh, to talk about all of this. Also, folks, I want to remind you that the first Christmas of our fledgling country, and I'm not talking about under the Articles of Confederation, I'm talking about the first Christmas spent after the Declaration of Independence, was spent by the Continental Army, the first Continental Army, many of you don't realize there is a second Continental Army <laughs> that uh, you will all hear from sometime in the future, I can assure you. But they spent their first Christmas freezing in deep snow in a place called Valley Forge. Many of them lost their feet or legs or fingers or hands to frostbite, frozen. And they did it because they loved freedom. I wonder what they would say about those of us now who are letting, willingly, letting us, are begging <laughs> for us to creep into socialism and give it all up. Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Cooper. I'm a new listener. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to thank you for what you're doing. Well, you're welcome. Uh, I'd like you to make a comment about Ross Perot and what he's doing with the United States of America. H. Ross Perot? Yes, sir. Well, I, that, that pretty much says it. H. Ross Perot is not for the people at all. In fact, he was one of the ones, along with Pat Buchanan and Bobo Gritz, who made sure that Clinton got elected. George Bush, as you know, if you were watching, didn't even run. And that's because the Bilderberg Group declared that, that William Clinton would be the next president of the United States of America. They had to fracture the conservative vote. That's the real reason why H. Ross Perot and Bobo Gritz and Pat Buchanan jumped in. Okay. to the race. They split the conservative vote, made sure that Clinton was elected president. Um, for a long time, people were were promoting Perot for president. They didn't even know who he was or what he stood for or what he believed, which is the absolute epitome of stupidity that I've ever seen in my life. Just because he was a successful businessman, they wanted to elect him president without even knowing where he stood or what his beliefs were on certain issues. When he finally opened his mouth, it was to say that the Constitution of the United States of America was an old, outdated document penned, penned by doting old men over 200 years ago who didn't understand the complexity of the modern age and that we need to have a constitutional convention to get rid of it. 
He wants a parliamentary style government along the lines of the New States Constitution that I published in my book, Behold a Pale Horse. H. Ross Perot, if you want to know the truth, is a stinking rotten traitor. And if you're behind him, if you're a member of his organization, if you're trying to get him elected president, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. If you're successful, I can guarantee you. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. Uh, is this Bob Cooper? Yes, it is. Yeah, I thought I recognized your voice. If I had to ask uh, Jesus a couple of questions, I'd ask him, uh, I'd ask him uh, whether he really was, uh, where, whether Mary was really his, uh, his mother and not his wife, and whether he spent his time in India speaking with the um, learned people there. What do you think his answer would be? I think his answer is yes. Why do you think that, when no one can even prove whether he lived or not, uh, based upon what is known about him in history? Where do you get, where do you get all this other stuff that doesn't even uh, uh, go along with what's written that nobody can even prove? Well, there are other writings around uh, that uh, talk about the ancient peoples. And uh, well, these, I ask him also... These are writings that talk about the ancient peoples, right. but they're not, they're not writings from the ancient peoples. Uh, they probably are. There are decipherments from the ancient people, especially by James Churchward, who carried out extensive research uh, on the people of Mu. And, uh, the people of what? The people of Mu, M-U. And also, I'd like to ask uh, this Jesus fellow, uh, what uh, what he's learned in the meantime? Uh, what has he learned about uh, humanity and about uh, other uh, other li life uh, in other parts? And is it possible that he uh, actually set up his own uh, crucifixion to carry out uh, the ancient plans in the old uh, Bible in the Old Testament? Is it possible that the essence, the people of whom he was part of, uh, had knowledge of? Uh, how to revive uh, somebody during the crucifixion. So you, you're talking about the Essenes. That's right, yes. Yes, that's correct. Well, I predicted a long time ago that what you're, what you're proposing is exactly what the Dead Sea Scrolls would eventually reveal, and that's exactly what they're saying that the Dead Sea Scrolls contain. But how do we know that the Dead Sea Scrolls aren't a forgery or a hoax? Especially well, since the you're right, uh, William. Uh, anything is possible. Uh, anything is possible. But the fact is that these uh, things uh, come about and uh, are uh, discovered, and they are uh, that. That was the job of ancient peoples: is to pass on ancient knowledge which has been destroyed by. Well, I, I beg to differ from you. We don't know what the job of the ancient peoples were, and I don't think they really did either. Any more than we know what our jobs are today. Uh, I think that knowledge the, is the passing on of knowledge is one of the highest uh, levels of humanity, and uh, the problem is that many uh, ancient emperors of China totally destroyed, uh, uh, and, and through wars and pestilence and destruction, destroyed ancient libraries which had hi histories of over a hundred thousand years uh, ago. Well, so, I beg to differ from you. It wasn't emperors of China. One emperor of China did totally destroy the the whole of of, of the libraries, so that you're talking all about history would begin. You're talking about Alexander, and he wasn't an emperor of China. No, I'm sorry. You, all due respect, to you sir, it was in 647 B.C. Uh, an a, a, a Chinese emperor on his deathbed commanded that all this no, all his books and all whatever scrolls were there would be burnt to the ground, and it destroyed the whole royal library to the ground, even it's being done in today in Tibet, sure. the, the Chinese are destroying uh, ancient uh, Tibetan uh, uh, books of knowledge. Well, you don't, know, you, you don't know that. You don't know that's happening. It is happening. No, you don't know that. You don't know what's happening in Tibet, and neither does anyone else. Thank you, sir. You don't know that. I, I tell you, I spoke to him personally, sir. Spoke to who? I spoke to the assistant of the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama is not in Tibet, and he doesn't know either. Uh, with all due respect, sir, it, is, it was his assistant who was making a... Uh, you're one of those New Age wacko, tutti-frutti, woo-woo groups. Uh, a lot of what you're expounding there comes right out of New Age uh, books that, uh, that do, not come, do not come from any point of truth or evidence or anything else. 
if those who want to prove that Jesus Christ was in fact the Son of God, incarnated in the flesh, walking upon this earth, can't prove that he even lived, then I would venture to you, my friend, that you you can't prove or even uh, support any of the things that you have expounded tonight. So, uh, you know, if you call this show, if the people who believe in Christ and want to be able to prove with all their heart the things that they believe can't do it, uh, and that there is no proof existing on this earth that he ever even lived, and those of us who, who follow his teachings believe in him as an article of faith, as all religious people do, no matter what religion they belong to, and that's why it's called religion, it cannot be proven. It is believed as an article of faith. Uh, I suggest that you take your New Age books and put them to the test. Most of the stuff that's written in New Age material is the most atrocious, most unmitigated lies and bullshit that's ever been written uh, upon the face of this earth. And that, my friend, I can prove. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this very short pause. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Hello. My name's Chuck Grove from Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, Chuck. I'm a pretty new listener. Um, I've been trying to pay attention the best I can through all the interference on the short wave. Um, I've heard you put down about everybody that's run for president lately. Who should we be looking at for the next election? Nobody that they offer you. See, you don't have a choice. You don't choose who runs, and you think that if you elect one or the other, that you're going to get a good choice. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you elect if the people didn't choose them. And the people never do. Not only that, but there's a misconception in this country. You think your vote counts. Your vote doesn't count. The president is elected by the electoral college, not the popular vote. What are we going to do? Well, we've got to wake up, number one. The biggest, the biggest goal, the biggest task that we have in front of us is to educate the millions of people that inhabit this country and the world. It's not just us that's in danger, it's the entire world. The New World Order will be a totalitarian socialist government. A benevolent despotism is what those at the top call it. I don't even understand that. Most people don't. I don't even understand that. So what do you suggest we do? Well... Just sit back and... No, don't sit back. You need to... Maybe uh, AK-47 and... No. No, you should have... You should have something on hand in case everything falls apart to protect yourself, your family, and your community. But uh, what I'm advocating is that if enough of us wake up, if enough of us wake up and really become responsible and understand really what's happening and how the system works and understand that this is not a democracy, it's a republic, and democracies never work, they always deteriorate into socialism, and then a dictator rises up and takes charge, and eventually, if democracy lasts that long, it destroys itself with immorality and licentiousness. Look at the old Roman Empire, which began as a, as a, a democracy. Look at all the democracies that sprang up and tried to survive in the past. Look what happened to them. You see, when you have one man, one vote, the people basically are selfish. They're greedy. They always vote themselves everything that they can possibly get until there's nothing left and everything disintegrates. You got that right. You got that right. So what are we going to do? Just sit back and just let it happen? No. And the whole world's going to... No. Under a dictator. If you, want to, if you want to sit back and let it happen, well, that's your choice. But I'm not sitting back and letting it happen. I'm just one person just like you. And just buy, just buy gold and... Hope like hell you can make it through to the next, uh... No. Until something happens? No. Educate your family. Educate your neighbors. Educate your community. Take our country back. As a republic, become once again what we were intended to be. Up for and by the people means that we have to know everything that's happening in Washington all the time. We are supposed to be the arbiters of our own faith. We must be the watchdogs of our government. We began as sovereign kings in our own right when this country was formed and the government was our chattel servant. We are quickly becoming the property of the government, which is becoming, once again, the Roman Empire. We collapsed. 
Now, this will eventually collapse, too, but when it collapses, it will collapse into anarchy, and race wars will begin to rage across the landscape, and people will kill you for a can of spinach in your cabinet. And I asked you, should I go out and buy me a gun and protect myself? And you said no. No, that's not what I said. I said that you should have those items on hand to protect yourself, your family, and your community. Didn't I? I should already have that stuff already bought. That's right. That's why our forefathers gave us the second article in amendment to the Constitution was so that we could protect ourselves against a government should it become despotic and oppressive. And from a it's coming. I believe that. It's coming. Yes, it is coming. Very fast. So, my friend, thank you for calling. Okay, thank you. The purpose of this program is to wake the sheeple, empower the people, and try to save this nation and thus freedom for the world. You see, if we lose our Constitution and Bill of Rights, freedom will fall everywhere in the world that it exists. This is the only place in the world that has a chance to stave off socialism. Socialism has always destroyed everything that it has ever touched. It takes everything away from you, including your dignity and self-respect. And you reach a state of total dependency, where the government becomes your father and you become a helpless child. And you pretend to work, and they pretend to pay you. Is that what you want? Good evening, you're on the air. Hello, Bill? Yes. This is Ty. Ty Cobb? Hi, Ty. There you go. I've, I heard some kind of alarming news last night on Texas News Network. Mm hmm Spoke of December 17th. They got, uh, Lloyd Benson said they got new money printed. It's going to go back to the gold standard. I don't believe it, but I've got it all recorded. It's all bullshit. And, uh, 60, they said 628,000, <coughs> uh, I forget, 600, uh, 600-some-odd 600 trillion dollars worth of gold and what have you that the Delta forces... Don't waste your breath. It's all a lie. Well, I'll send you a copy of the tape. Y'all hope y'all got my order? We've got it all. We've completely investigated this. Roy Swashinger and all of this stuff, and everybody's running around paying them $300 so they can file a piece of paper, paper with the county clerk, and uh, they're all supposed to get millions of dollars back, and here patriots are chasing their tail around in a circle again. There you go. Listen, I want to take a wish, Carolyn, your wife, and Pooh, uh, very Merry Christmas. Thank you, and same to you, Ty. Uh, Merry Christmas. God bless you. Thank you. And, uh, folks, don't fall for these scams out there. The Treasury Department did not buy back the Federal Reserve. The Delta Forces are not going around the world collecting gold. We're not going back on the gold standard. Alan Greenspan is not dead. And all of these jerks out there that are taking your money, $300 at a time, and pulling your tails while you run around in circles, not doing what you should be doing to save this country so that you could sometime in the future maybe get your hands on this fairy tale scheme of a few million bucks per person based upon the fact that you file a piece of paper for $300. What fools! And you wonder how they're able to take our country away from us? I'll tell you why. Most of you are just living in abject stupidity. You're ignorant, apathetic, and the only thing you care about is how to get another buck in your bank account. I'm telling you right now, if you don't start getting concerned about principles and ideals, you're not going to be able to have a bank account. And they're going to take everything you've ever owned or ever will own away from you, and you're going to be a slave in the New World Order under a cashless system chained to a computer that watches you 24 hours a day. And I'll answer the question that I asked at the beginning of the show. If Jesus Christ came back today and stood up and proclaimed his identity and the fulfillment of his promise, you would murder him exactly as you murdered David Koresh in Waco, Texas. And don't say that you didn't do it. You did. You approved it. You allowed it to happen. It makes you guilty, just as guilty as those who carried it out. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Hi, Bill. Uh, just a couple of three things real quick here. Um, uh, one is uh, I have a couple of parallels along with yours in the Navy, you know. Uh -huh. I was on an oil tanker, and I was in the Atlantic. 
and uh, on a fleet oil of AO-100. And I used to read the Bible a lot and so forth, you know, just like you uh-huh. have done all your life. I can tell by reading your material. And, uh, but I was left hanging on a limb until I uh, got in touch with you through uh, 5810 WWCR. Uh-huh. And I just want to thank you, uh, Mr. Cooper. You are really doing a wonderful work. And especially for me, I can hardly sleep at night uh, reading and thinking you know, about your teachings, you know. And yesterday I, I got my uh, sword, sword, uh, dungeon fine sword. Really great book. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that that, that uh, opens your eyes, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Reed. I've been struggling uh, oh, for many years still uh, reading the history books back in my library. They're just full of books, you know. But uh, you're the spark of my life. You're the real torch barrier. And the people, uh, I wish they would appreciate you more because you, you're you really uh, showing us what <clears throat> has gone on and what's coming in the future, I believe. And I'm, I'm, I'm just the most grateful person around, so to speak, you know. Well, I, I, I thank you very much for that. But I, I don't look for anybody to appreciate anything very much. If you look back through history, anyone who's ever dared to stand up and tell the truth has always been persecuted. And no one has ever realized that they were telling the truth until long after they were that, gone. That is very true. I was thinking the same thing you just said, Jesus, Godly Mohammed, um, lots of them, Abraham Lincoln, and so forth. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, and I had one other thing. Uh, anyway, I appreciate the material that you, you are recommending for us. It's wonderful. I live alone, so I have plenty of time to read. Great. I read the Bible all the way through when I was aboard the USS Midway in 1955. Uh-huh. But I was still left dangling on a limb, and I was dangling until I got in touch with you here about four or five months ago. And uh, I, I just I want you to know that I'm so grateful. Your teaching is so great, and I wish a lot of people would listen to you. Also, uh, now if I believe that <clears throat> if Jesus would uh, come to earth, you say now. Yes. I, you know what I believe would happen, Bill. I believe immediately after he landed on earth, a lump would come in his throat. We can stop and consider all the killing and wars and corruptions and AIDS and so forth. Makes you wonder why he'd ever want to come back, doesn't it? I, I imagine he would uh, make a U-turn and high-peel it back up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you, boy. Thanks, I, sir. I'd think twice before I ever came back if I ever got to, to, get, got to get away from here, I'll tell you. <laughs> Anyway, I, I can't live without you, Bill. I'm not gay, but I can't live without you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. All right. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. 602-333-2174. Folks, it's not a requirement that anyone believe what I believe. In fact, one of the tenets of the Hour of the Time and of the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence, which I administer, which is thousands of people all over the world who do nothing but collect information, analyze it, we compile it, we sift through it, we separate the truth from the lie, and anything that we can't determine which puzzle it goes into, it goes in a big box with a question mark on it until we can. And we're constantly doing that. You see, I don't care what you believe. What I want you to do is stop believing everybody else. Start thinking for yourself. Make sure that what you believe is the truth and that you're not believing it just because somebody told you that that's what the truth was. Wake the sheeple. You know, he made a good point. He reads for hours and hours and hours, and so do I. I've been reading all my life. My grandmother taught me to read when I was a little bitty boy, and I've never stopped. The sum total of all of the knowledge ever, ever collected by the human race exists in books. This nation and most nations in the world are quickly becoming visual, visual societies. They can't exist without their television, which is the greatest, most successful brainwashing tool ever invented. And it's amazing that people fall for it. 
A recent poll said that the average American spends seven hours a day in front of his television set. And that is just unbelievable to me. You see, when you're watching television, you are forced. You are forced into the beliefs and the dogma and the concepts of those who present those images to you. You quickly forget how to think, if you ever knew in the beginning. And most people today who belong to this visual society have never had an original thought in their life. You need to turn off your television and open some books. You need to investigate and determine what the truth is for yourself. There was a time in this country when journalists presented the facts to you by reading several different reports about the same thing. You determined what the truth is.